Hi everybody, my name is William Beam. Welcome to the video from Aperture versus Lightroom.com. What we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at Aperture Books. This section is going to be to get you started organizing your photos to go into a photo book and using the basic layouts that Apple provides. In some future videos, we're going to go through how you can customize those layouts and also uh, some features involving geodata maps and how that can incorporate inside your books. So with that, let me go ahead, I'm gonna bring up Aperture and we'll get started with this. And as you can probably see here, I've got uh, a project called Disney. I live near Walt Disney World, so I've got, you know, visit all the parks that are around there and tend to take a lot of photos there. So this is kind of a good example for me to use for a book. If you look down here at the bottom, you'll see that I've got 13,545 items in this project. That is just way too many images to try and want to go over to weed through and pick out for a book. But I've got a little bit of a system that I use to keep things organized for what I might want to put into a book or to print out or use for anything else. And rather than using stars that uh, some folks use, I kind of tend to like using color labels. So before we get too deep, let me go into preferences here and I'll just show you what I'm talking about. Right here under labels, I've kind of used a uh, red, yellow, green system that I've expanded a little bit. So red, bad, that's rejected. I've modified that. So if I mark something as a red item, that it's basically thrown away into the trash can. And when I import my photos, they really start off right here in, in orange. They're to be reviewed. I don't know if they're gonna be rejected. I don't know if they're gonna be processed. So that's kind of like the limbo state that all of my photos enter a project. And as I go through, I don't always necessarily process everything in order that I shoot it. So I, sometimes I just want to see what I'm going to process. And other times I don't want to have to weed through everything that I've imported. I just want to go right into processing. It's just my own workflow and the way I, I like doing things. So if I come along and I see a photo that says I want to uh, process it, I'll promote it from orange to yellow and it'll be in the 2B process. Then later on, I can just do a quick uh, color filter on to be processed and I can see, okay, these are the ones that I've decided that are have potential for, to finish up and I can work on those. And once I'm done, I'll go ahead and mark it as a green color and that's uh, finished. And if I really like it, I'll make it blue and that would be a portfolio quality. Really don't have much blue here in this one since it's Disney, not really a portfolio item to me, but that's uh, kind of the workflow I use on all of my different Aperture uh, libraries. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say that I choose this image right here and I want to change its uh, color label. Hold down the command key and it's on orange right now, which is the second label. Command two doesn't change a thing. I hit command three, it moves up to the next level, that's yellow. And that's the one that I've said to be processed. Command four promotes it up to a finished product. And if I really like that photo, I'd hit command five that brings it up to uh, blue, that would be my portfolio. Command one would take it back to red and that basically means delete this photo, get it out of my sight, I don't wanna see it anymore. But for right now, I'm just gonna put them right back there where I import at the orange level. So that's, those photos that you see that are in orange are still to be reviewed. I haven't really decided if they're keepers, if there's something that I'm gonna do something with them later or not. They're just one of the thousands taking up space in my library at this point. Okay, the next thing we want to do is find our keepers. So we're going to come up here to the filter, click this button, and I'm going to search on color label. And as you can see over here, where there's a little uh, ring around each one of these things, well, I can toggle it on and off. And I don't have any blue ones, so no, like I said, no portfolios in the Disney one. And that really helps me select what I want to uh, keep and select in here or not. So just the green ones, those are my finished photos. And that's all I've got to do. I've searched on those. That gives me, what have I got here? 119 items. So I can close this down. Now I'm at an optional step here. I can go ahead and select all of them with command A and come up here to create a new book. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create a new album. And this step is optional, but it really depends on how you like to work. So I'll go ahead and show it to you. We'll call this uh, My Disney Photos. Not the most imaginative name, but hey. 
it works for an example. Now, the reason that you want to take a look at this is it'll, it'll show you a few things that you may not have noticed before. For example, this one is, I've got one here that's a keeper, that's my finished product, and all of these were selected and it's in a stack. I just want to shrink that down. I don't necessarily want all of those photos in the book, I just want the finished one. There are also a couple of occasions, I think I've got another one of those stacks over here, a couple of occasions where I may have kind of a before and after. So for example, this is my original shot out of camera. This is my finished one. I don't need to show that, unless I was doing a before and after, I don't need to show that in the book. So I can just select that, hit delete. But the biggest reason that you may want to create an album before you go into the book is if you like to use this kind of format to manually sort the order that you're going to put them into your book. And there is a reason that you may want to do that that will become a bit more apparent later, but I'll talk about it. Let's say that this one is the first photo I want to show. It's the station before you walk into the Magic Kingdom. And I may want to organize these by park. You know, for example, uh, some of these are, are Magic Kingdom photos. Some of them are Animal Kingdom, some Epcot, some uh, Disney Hollywood Studios. And there's some that are from events. Like, for example, these are from the Star Wars weekend show that uh, they put on every summer. Things that, you know, they just, uh, I may want to have them in a certain order. The reason I might want to do that here is because there's a feature inside of the books that will let you kind of do an auto dump of all your selected photos into the book. And at least if you select your order this way first, when you dump them in, they will go in the order that you want. I tend not to use that auto dump feature unless I'm just really out of ideas because I don't necessarily know what kind of um, format or layout that it's going to select for me. But that's you know, kind of what the next step. And the idea here is if you create the, um, an album, you can sort through it, get rid of a few things that you don't want, and then you're ready to go on to the next step. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and create every, or excuse me, select everything in this album. And we'll go ahead now and create our book. Okay. Let's give this a title. And again, my uh, Disney book, if I can spell properly. You got a few choices here. First is add selectum items to the book. I've got everything selected. I want them to, it doesn't put them in the book layout like you see here. What it does is it puts them on a selection bar that you can then draw from to put in the book. So since these are the keepers that I've already decided that I want to have as potential use in my book, you definitely want to check this. The book type, you get a few choices here. Uh, there are sizes, you know, extra large down to small. And you can take a look at um, Apple's website and it'll show you uh, what the different sizes are on the dimensions. And there's uh, some non-Apple books for different vendors. If you go to Apple's site, you'll also find that there are some plugins for different themes down here. Particularly if you're a wedding photographer, if you're a family or a portrait photographer, some of those themes, senior high school portraits, whatever you may have, some of those plugins will give you more themes that might better fit your market if you're um, doing this for uh, clients. So we've got uh, a few choices here, art collection, the formal theme, which looks to be more like you know weddings and events. The journal theme brings up something interesting. You see a map here, and I wanted to point out that some of these themes will work with a uh, geographic data embedded in your photographs. So for example, Apple Maps, if you want to use that information in a book, you have to choose one of these themes that has support for it. Not all of them support maps, so that kind of may limit uh, what your plans are. Uh, modern Lines, Photo Essay, you can see the layouts will change greatly depending on what you're doing. Picture Book is uh, pretty much full size on each page. A proof book gives you some metadata and a place to make some notes if you want to. Snapshots, special occasions, again, another kind of wedding or event format. And these last two stock books um, might give you an option to print out your best shots if you want to show them to potential customers that are interested in what you may have to offer. And I'm going to choose this one called Modern Lions because you can see from here it's got a number of different types of layouts and that's something that uh, we can use to our advantage over here. So go ahead and I'll choose theme. Let's see if my little Facebook notifications bother us again. <laughs> okay. Right off the bat, you can see a variety of layouts that are over here. You don't have to take them in these in this order if you don't want to. 
a few things certainly you do your cover page you know is you're not going to swap that out very much you might uh, make some adjustments to it which we'll show in another video but right off your this will be your cover page this would be your inside dust cover so if you wanted to put a photo up here you just literally drag and drop it on the gray you don't want to put it over here in the background you don't want to try and put it on this stuff uh, and this is going to be a blank page layout over here so what you're looking for is this gray background that has a plus sign in it that's your target where you can drop a photo and you can see right here the train room that's the uh, version name of your photograph you can change that if you want to but by default it'll put that in here and then Apple provides some uh, lorem epsom just basically filler text in these little text boxes over here if you want to uh, modify that you can just go over here and uh, change the, the format a couple of times yeah, let's deselect that. We'll get more into text in one of the future videos. So it, it's really that simple. You come over here, you want to uh, drag and drop, and you can move that you know, all the way down. When you've got a title page like this, let's say this will be Magic Kingdom. I mean, it's just that simple. Click it, type what you want, and Let's drag another photo in there. Um, select this one. And you can kind of go down through that. If you want to use the auto layout that I was talking about, just click on this little gear icon down here and where it says auto flow unplaced images, or you could select a series of images and auto flow just those images. So if I select that, actually, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's get over here and we'll slide this over and we're going to select just a few of these images click this auto flow selected images and you'll see that it puts them just right up in there all right here's something to pay attention to from the auto flow first off this image of the bicycle you can see down here it is you know a landscape image at the bottom it's put it in a horizontal uh frame over here just does not look good if you're wondering what happened to this image over here it came all the way up here to the top to our title. So Autoflow didn't necessarily start from the page that I'd selected and it did not look for the layout of an image so for the type of frame that it was putting into. So for example, this is landscape. This is a portrait size uh, frame. Just it's not an intelligent match. So that's one of the reasons I don't like Autoflow. You don't get control over what you're going to do. You may not like the results. So it's it's a tool that's there, and I think it might work better in some of the other themes that you have to choose from, but this one, not so much. One of the things we can do is if we double click on an image, you'll see this image scale, and that will kind of let you zoom in if you want to, or you can also uh, move the image around a bit, but it like, like I said, it just does not work for this particular type of image. So we'll just select that, hit delete, and matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and delete uh, all the rest of this as well. Because, oh, sorry, might have if I chose the image here instead of the thumbnail over there. So, you're probably going to want to go ahead and select your layouts that you're looking for to match the images you want to put on a given page. With that in mind, if you see this layout over here that's on uh, pages four and five, and you say, that's not uh, fitting with the kinds of images that I want to put on a page. Don't worry, you just click this little triangle over here and this will show you all the master pages, essentially templates that you can use uh, to replace this particular type of, or this particular page. So if you don't like the one that's there, you can uh, choose any of these others. And in a future video, we'll show you how you can customize these. If you don't see what you like, then we can go ahead and do something completely different. So for example, if we want to use this one as a photo spread that's covering uh, two pages and again let me come all the way down here to the end I like this image for a photo spread you just put it right in there and you're ready to go it covered both pages over here it's looking for full size but let's say I've got these two character shots they're both portrait and that's not what I want then I will go over here and I'll look for something like this one two up vertical and I can go ahead and put in my characters over here and over here 
and I'll put this grumpy looking fellow over there. That's pretty much it. You can go down through and choose all of these uh, other layouts as much as you want. If you uh, find that you've got more pages here for layout than you do before the end of your book, you can just simply select those and delete that page. I'm going to hit cancel on this one. Uh, notice it does give you a warning. You've got to have at least 20 pages to order a book. And we're a little over that right here, but you've got the option to delete it if, if you're you know, if your book is getting too large or if you simply don't have what you want. the Something to keep in mind is you're being charged by the page, obviously. So the more pages you add, the higher the price of your book. And I guess we can come over here. Let's say for this page, I don't want to have uh, just one large. Maybe I want to go ahead and scroll further down and see if I've got something like this. And... Maybe that will be my Star Wars page. If, see, now if I'd done a better job of uh, organizing this in the album beforehand, I'd have all my Star Wars pictures together. Let's give Darth Maul his own little do. And Darth Sidious obviously got to be there in the middle. Come over for a couple more. Actually, Darth Sidious gets a lot of play in this uh, Star Wars weekend show. So you can set something up like that. You've got a number of options here before you ever have to get into doing your own layout. Some of the key things to keep in mind are that you can uh, very easily add pages. You just come over here and hit plus or minus. Uh, if you click here on this uh, gear icon, you've got a number of uh, options as well. And... This one for save page we'll get to in the future video, but basically once you've uh, changed the layout that you want to, you can create a new master and give it a name that you want to. We can add uh, text columns. Uh, we can change our alignment a little bit. Let's go back up over here. Let's say for this title, I've already used this one. You can see down here this little uh, number one and this again over here. If it has a badge on it, and it's already been placed on the book and the number shows you how many times it's been placed on the book. So if I decide to put this one on the cover, I can still do that and then you can see the uh, numbers incremented to two. So this the same photo shows uh, twice in our book. So These little uh, cells over here by default have their own little alignments that are already created. When we look in the next section, we'll uh, look at ways that you can change the alignment if you want to center this, if you, you want to uh, move them around. There's a, a number of options we can do to, to try and change the layout. But for the most part, that's the basics. Organize your photos, make your selections, and the, drag and drop them. You can change or select uh, page layouts using this little uh, tri triangle right there. And then once you're done, you've got all your layout in place. You've made your text the way you want to. All you've got to do is come over here and click on Buy Book. And, of course, it's going to give me an error right now since we have not actually completed the book. Let's cancel that. And just for the sake of making that happy, I'm going to go ahead and say Auto Flow Unplaced Images. Now, you can see it kind of moving along there. It's not necessarily the order that I would like, but, you know, everywhere there's a place where an image should have gone... Now we can see that there's an image there. And in some cases, two images. So we've got all that out of the way. Now we can click on Buy Book. Don't want to see that message again. And what that's warning me is that there are seven empty text fields. So apparently there's places like, for example, let's cancel this. There's a title that goes here. We'll call that uh, Christmas. Because not only do I have my Christmas tree over here, but also I've got my little holiday decorations along uh, the Tower of Terror. And I'm going to click this again. It's going to connect. And what it's going to ask for is your Apple ID. It's going to show you what the price is. This is, this is for an extra large book, 13 by 10. I've got 68 pages, and it's 121.51. And you can go ahead and preview the book if you want to. I'm going to cancel this because I don't really want to buy this layout. It's not uh, what I had in mind. 
And that is just an unfortunate selection from Autoflow. <laughs> so let's... Uh, that's, uh, if that's not a hint as to why you should go ahead and do the layout yourself, I don't know what is. But the nice thing is Apple has their own printing. They do a very good job of it. If you want to use another print service, you can come over here and select print. You could uh, print it yourself. I wouldn't recommend doing it on a little black and white laser printer. Or you could uh, select this to a PDF. You've got, you can see the number of different uh, folders over here. Save it to a PDF. You could do it as an ebook. You could uh, send it off to another vendor that can print from a PDF. You've, you've got different options besides going to Apple's uh, site. But the quality from Apple is very good, so I don't think you're going to be disappointed with that. That is going to wrap it up for this particular video. On the next video, I'm going to go into more customization, and we'll look over here in the edit layout and how to change and make some of your own masters and uh, do a, a few other things as far as filters. For example, just to give you a sneak peek, let's say that this image over here, I decided I wanted to make black and white. I can take a look over my previews over this, and suddenly it's black and white. And notice down here, it did not change immediately my original image, but you've made that change over here. So you can look at the layout, make changes in the book layout if you want to. If you don't like it, you hit Control Z and you're back. But there's another little feature. I know I said I was going to hold this off to the next book, but I just can't help it. Let's say that I wanted to make this a black and white image and not affect over here my thumbnail. So my original in my library stays color, but just the book printout is black and white. And that's what the magic of some of these little filters over there. There's not a whole lot, but it does give you uh, an option to do a few different things. And we can make some kind of creative backgrounds as well uh, using these filters. So that's for the next video. Hope you enjoyed this. Again, this is William Beam. I'm from AperturevsLightroom.com. Please stop by and visit and have fun.